Okay, uh, hi everyone. My name is Prasanna Seshadri and I'm a puzzle constructor. Seems like an easy sentence, and uh, yet every time I say it, I get some really interesting reactions, right? So usually I get questions which basically turn me into a tape recorder. So people then ask, okay, but what is your job? I'm a puzzle constructor. Okay, but what do you do for getting income? I'm a puzzle constructor, right? So then, okay, the questions move on to, is this all you do? And then followed by a face palm inducing MBA Karlona. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, so then, thank you. So then I go on and say a little more because now I have a few accolades. So I say I'm the director of the World Puzzle Federation or that I'm a puzzle master at Grandmaster Puzzles or that I'm a support administrator and uh, in event coordinator at Logic Masters India. Or that I'm the highest ranked Indian at the World Sudoku and Puzzle Championship. So all of these are true, but eventually I always like to still say that I'm a puzzle constructor. When I say I'm a puzzle constructor and people just leave it at that and start asking questions, that's when I get my most interesting conversations. Right? So generally, what exactly is it that I do in puzzles? Right? So there's an element of puzzles which is not just, you know, a lot of thinking, a lot of math people think or whatever else. There's an element of art as well to it. So the really best authors of the world, uh, this is what they do. They put in some kind of interesting themes to their creations and constructions by which they can kind of express themselves. And generally what happens with me is I even use puzzles to express myself on special occasions and so on. So for instance, uh, this was in uh, 2013. I was one year into puzzle construction. This was on Mother's Day. I'm pretty close to my mom. It's a shading puzzle with certain uh, clues, right? So the what I'm going to say has nothing to do with the solving, but it shows an added element to it. So for instance, here the clues basically say HMD to you, which is Happy Mother's Day to you. And below you have USHAS, which is Usha Seshadri, that's my mom. And if you see just at the left, there is number one and at the right, there is mom. There's some other clues as well to it, which I add in just to make it solvable, right? So there are two parts to it. One is the look and then the solve. So as I go on now, I will just like do a quick fire explanation of what I've done each year in my life. And I will do it while placing a puzzle, which I have made specially for my birthday each year. So if you can, then spot the te uh, theme of my age for each year, right? So let's start. So at 21, I had just started puzzle construction. I started my own blog. It was freely available puzzles. I wasn't learning anything from it. But I got a little lucky and I got into Pune newspaper, which commissioned my puzzles and I had a daily puzzle section there. But that's about it. Other than that, I was just providing for uh, national championships around the world and so on. And because my blog was good, they kept asking me. So I was just building my reputation. All right. So at 22, I was one of the authors at the World Puzzle Championship in China. One of four international authors chosen. So there, were, there was one from uh, USA, one from Netherlands, one from Serbia, and then me. Right. And then, so this basically put my reputation up and I was basically moving upward. So then in 2014, when I turned 23, I joined Grandmaster Puzzles. So I said that I'm a puzzle master at Grandmaster Puzzles. It's a US based company that deals with the publishing puzzles and puzzle books. There's a puzzle blog. So thankfully my boss there is very accommodating. He lets me do these kind of specials on my birthday even though he has his own set schedule of themes and so on, he will still keep a date for me every year. Moving on to when I turned 24. This was the year where I got my best ranking at the World Sudoku Championship, which is 7th, which is India's best as well. I'm moving on to 25. This was when at the World Sudoku Grand Prix and the World Puzzle Grand Prix, I got India's best rankings, a fourth in the former and a sixth in the latter. Right? These are also India's best so far. I also got elected into the board of the World Puzzle Federation in this year. There was an election at the end of the year. 
where it's just a voting process and then there's that administrative board. So I got elected into that as well. This is probably the most obvious theme, right? So this was in 2017 and I became appointed as the director of the World Puzzle Federation, which is my current main job description. And we also organized the World Sudoku and Puzzle Championships in India and Bangalore and I was a core member of the organizing team. And then I just turned 27, 15 days ago and I'm here. Hey. So now that I've shown you the artistic side of it, I would like to show you some, a little bit of puzzle solving, right? Just a little demo. I'll just give you the basics, but then I'll just speed solve to show you how things go and then I'll carry on, right? Okay. So this is called a slither link or a fence puzzle. So it's about drawing a loop, a bunch of lines together, a closed loop. And there are certain numbers which show you the number of lines around that cell. That's about it. Easy rule. So there's a certain basic pattern to it at the start. So you generally look at high and low numbers and you mark around them. So this is basically what you get. This is a very basic pattern. This is usually the start of it. This usually comes in Times of India and the Mumbai Mirror or so on. So it's all about patterns. You might have got the first one. Maybe the others are not as obvious, but I'm just going to speed solve away so that you can see how fast things go, I guess. So it's all, I'm still just following the basic patterns, but maybe it's a bit more difficult to look into now, but we have certain teaching procedures as well, which you can get into later. So I'm actually not speed solving because my hand is a little weird. I'm just going to turn. and it's done. This is basically the solution. You just had a loop. So I'll solve one more puzzle and then I'll get to solving fast and so on. This is an Akari or a light up puzzle. Uh, so basically you place some lights in the grid such that all the white cells are illuminated and the lights can't illuminate each other. So if you kind of, I'll show you like a, if I draw a light here, it basically illuminates the full it illuminates in the rope directions of chess, for instance. So then the numbers provide the number of lights around it. So the four is the easiest step. You can directly put this. And then the twos open up. So it's always a procedural solve. People generally get a little intimidated when they see like puzzles because puzzles like these, because people are not used to getting results after a procedure. They are used to immediate results. But here it's definitely better to do a procedure. And I'm done. Once they look at it and they understand a little more of what I do, they ask, how do you solve so fast? Or how many hours do you spend in solving? Right? So generally what I would say is there's no such thing as hours of solving. How do you solve so fast is probably also not the right question. So I'm a kind of solver who likes to explore the different types, right? So I could have just shown you an easy uh, Sudoku now, which all of you know, but I prefer to like shake your mind up and show you something new. Right. So generally that's how I am. I look at a lot of new puzzle types. I look for new stuff coming out in the world. I try to invent my own puzzle types and uh, generally uh, solve in that way. Right. So the puzzle types here, the two which I showed you, 
they do have some application to what you do in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe it's not exactly clear by looking at it, but if you think back to the second name that I said for each puzzle, Slitherlink was also known as Fence. So basically, this was made by someone who conceptualized building a fence and protecting protecting certain things inside from certain things outside. Right? This is something we probably look into in day-to-day -day life. Maybe we want to build boundaries for certain things. Generally, if you have a property, you're looking into building boundaries and so on. And then the other one was Akari or Light Up. So Light Up is basically, it deals with some uh, the scenario of someone caught up in a dark room and needing to come out and like, you know, certainly uh, getting out with a bunch of lights and so on. So maybe these are not exact real world scenarios, but what they do is they reduce our real world problems into a set of binary or set of clues which you can easily go through, right? It's a clear way to go through things. And this is the main thing that puzzle solving has given me. A certain clarity of thought, which is generally a, a very underestimated quality, but I'll try to explain what it is. So generally when I'm faced, in a problem, faced with a problem, I do the same thing that I do here. I bring it down to a set of clues, or maybe like constructing puzzles, I bring it down to nothing, an empty palette, right? And then I move forward. So I just take away all of the additional considerations that come in and so on and try to get the best path forward. So generally, I'm confident that I've made the best decision given the scenario. It's not that I have the solution to everything. Obviously, that's not how life works. But I always know that I have taken the best path and that gives me a sense of closure and I move on in a positive way. And generally, that's the best outcome you can hope for in any kind of problem solving. Right? So actually, that's it. So I will leave you with two puzzles I made for the event. Right. Okay. So the first one is obviously themed on the event, right? And uh, if you cannot see the theme, then the next one is for you. Cool. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being here.